icon go. There it is. Now we're Perfect. officially live. Okay. Good to have you here. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> this is our good buddy, John. I have a story. Welcome, everybody. It's uh, our latest and greatest Facebook Live with time, so we're excited to have you back. We've got a really fun show today. Um, excited. John actually reached out to us, and we invited him to be on the show, and he agreed, and we're super excited. I have a fun story to tell on John. Hopefully, he'll laugh, but John's a manufacturer's rep, so yeah. he learns all about the gear, and then he teaches all of us so we know what we're talking about, and um, I'm usually... <laughs> I'm pretty standoffish when manufacturer reps come in through the door because I just cannot absorb any more information that they're sending to us. And so John came in here a lot over the course of, what, like two years? Yep. Yeah. And uh, I was probably kind of a butt, never gave him the time of day. But um, we really, really like John. He's earned our trust. Uh, we trust what he has to tell us. Uh, he showed up. It was the Lamborghini cell, like the Tim Shiner Lamborghini cell. He brought in the, uh, you don't know that story, but we'll tell you later, but he brought in all these Sim, Sim 2 projectors behind us and left them here for a long time so we could play with them and beat them up and was really good about it. He'd come and take them for a demo and then he'd bring them back and drop them off. We're like, oh man, okay, John's being awesome. And, and now we really, really like John. He's been a lot of fun to have around, so excited to have you here. And Thanks. he knows a thing or two. Yeah, I've learned a little bit over 30 plus years of working out here in the industry and talking to guys and doing huge screens and theaters. So we're going to talk. We're going to talk today about and, and kind of a quick review. Any of you that are just hopping on and this is kind of your first time seeing us, what we do is we like to bring people like John on. We're going to talk a lot about specific products, uh, Sim2 and Dynaudio, um, Sim2 projectors and Dynaudio speakers. <laughs> But we also want to give you a lot of just general information about hi-fi audio and, you know, good projection, good, good video. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the specific products, but also hopefully give you some helpful tips so as you're out there shopping and looking for your own gear, you have a better idea of, of what to look for. Um, hey, Theo, what's up? Always good to have Theo on board. Theo, uh, can't wait to see you at Cedia. And looking forward to seeing you after uh, Cedia. We're going to come out to New York and say hi. So... Thanks for, for hopping in. We need to do one of these with you, buddy. Um, Theo is the father of home theater, so uh, super cool to have Theo watching with us. All right, mm -hmm. so let's chat shop. Okay. Um, real fast, you have to tell the story okay. about... So I like to wear my hat, <laughs> I like yeah, to wear my hat on backwards, yeah. so you have to tell us what Sim2 said. Okay, so I told them about the social media thing that time is letting us do, and they thought it was great. We did a first run, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. So the Italians call back and go, hey, that was all good. There's a lot of things that Matt did a great job prepping or priming us on. And then they go, but tell Matt, he can't wear his hat backwards. Man. <laughs> it just doesn't work in Italy. And we're like, oh, okay. Anyway, he, he took it really well. You can see he's pretty uh, smiling. I think it's funny. But, but if Sim 2, if you guys will send me a hat, I'll wear it on the right way. Yep. Uh, or a shirt, be very happy to wear it. So, there you go. Uh, next time it. we do it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, tell me a little bit about Sim 2, and then I want to dive right into just the tech, okay. really for video, but also for Sim 2 projectors, sure. and kind of walk through that. For, tell us a little bit about the background okay. of Sim 2, who they are, where they came from. Neat. So Sim 2 is in Portinone, Italy. Uh, that's outside of Venice, about 40 kilometers. And they've been producing televisions, the regular CRT type products, and of course regular three gun projection, and now laser projection, UHD 4K products, uh, literally since um, the early 80s. And prior to that, they sold more CRTs in Europe under the Celico brand. So it's a worldwide product. It's being sold in Asia, Indonesia, obviously North America, uh, South America, and of course Europe. So these guys have always been I like to call them the Ferraris or the Lamborghinis of the projector business. Uh, they're sweating details that you and I get to learn about and then we got to tell you about because, <laughs> frankly, there's not enough documentation out there. So I've been repping these products over 20 years, and well, that's pretty amazing in this biz. One of the first um, kind of experiences I had with Sim2 projectors is we did a really nice theater. It was one of our first theaters that won an award, and the client's father had a theater. And it was about 10 years old, and he was really excited. Maybe it was five years old, but he was excited to upgrade. Mm -hmm. So he came to his son's home, watched the theater, watched a the movie on the son's theater, was all excited about it. Son has a 4K projector. Dad has a HD SIM projector. Mm -hmm. And after the video, after the movie's over, he tells his dad, he's like, do you want to upgrade to this projector? And he goes, no, I, I, still, like my, I still like my SIM2 projector. Yep. I think I'm just going to stay put mm -hmm. until SIM2 has a 4K projector that I can get into. Right. And uh, I thought that was really fascinating because at that time, 
everybody we showed one of the newer 4K projectors to wanted it. Mm -hmm. And this guy was so in love with his SIM2 projector, he wasn't going to go anywhere. And that, for all of us, you know, Greg, I think, remembers, that was one of the first times where we were kind of like, man. Really? You didn't we, want to buy the 4K thing? Yeah, we better start looking at the SIM2 projectors. And then you guys came uh -huh. uh, and sat down with our team for a while and told us all about it. And then, of course, we got the chance to watch these. We spent... Um, I spent a couple of hours uh, about three weeks ago, two weeks ago. I spent a couple hours just watching by myself, which was an awesome experience. I had the theater to myself and just got to watch the same scene over and over and over and over again between mm -hmm. the different projectors. Right. Uh, a lot of fun. But talk to me a little bit about, I'll get into specifics, but just talk to me a little bit about the tech kind of um, sort of the, the process that Sim2, what, what's sort of their, okay. their mission, what's kind of the overarching goal of Sim2 projection from what so, you know? Really what they're trying to do is make it like film and make it a natural picture. So SIM2 was in the early developments of the TI chip, the DLP chipsets that we use. Uh, all of the SIM2 products are a Texas Instrument DLP device. We've stuck to that because we can get the black ratios, the grays, and the color saturation that you need to make a great picture. So their focus has always been to be a natural, not overcolored, cartoonish looking picture. Um, and they felt that TI had the best chipsets for that. Uh, other vendors do other things, but we see a sharpness and a clarity in the DLP chip. So that's our forte. When the TI 4K chip came out that was consumer usable, in other words, small enough to put into a chassis like these so that they'll actually fit in the house, not something that's the size of a fridge, uh, that's where 4K became a reality for the SIM2 people. So our goal is Black levels, grayscale, color accuracy, and then last uh, resolution, which is kind of opposite of where everybody's been screaming 4K and higher resolution. And you talked about that when you first came in today, and you, you kind of just hit it, but go ahead and repeat it. You said, what our eyes see first. Mm -hmm. Kind of walk through that. Yeah, so the first thing that the human eye will notice, because we're visual people, everybody will go to a store and say, let me see that piece. And they really want to touch it and play with it, but they always tend to say, let me see it. Take it out of the case. Let me play with it. So the human eye and the brain basically see blacks. Is the picture washed out? Does it look like it's got black? Then it's grayscale, which is why, you know, Matt and I have black on today. And you can <laughs> see all the layers in our shirts because of the grayscale. Then color is that we don't look overly red or green or a funny tint. Now, these guys went out all weekend and got sunburned up in <laughs> Idaho. So rookie mistake. You know, they got a little glow to them. I don't have that glow today. But color and then last is resolution. So resolution is an important point in this design, but it isn't the end all. And just because you have higher resolution, really for most consumers just means how close I am to the screen. Uh, you step back one row or step back two feet, what 4K does tends to disappear. So we're going to, with that, we're going to jump right into this and, and kind of talk in the framework of what Sim2 is doing. But okay. I, I mentioned this on a couple of our live videos the last few weeks. I'm going to review it real quick. But when we talk about video in general, but also when we're talking about projection for your home theater, your home cinema, there's a couple of things we're looking at. 4K is the one that most people recognize. But I read this on a CD form. It made sense. They call 4K is the main dish. But you have your side dishes with it. So you have HDR, you have your you know, 8 to 12-bit color. In this yep. instance, we really want to be 10 and 12-bit color. You've got your high dynamic range, your HDR. And then we have uh, our chroma sampling, our color sampling, whether it's you know, 420 or 444, where we're going to be. 444 mm -hmm. basically means there's no sampling, but we'll get to that. Yep. And then we've got our frame rate. So you know, are we 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second? Each one of those items has a huge effect on the picture that's going on on the screen. And the thing that people have to understand when you're out there shopping is that every piece of your system has to support, if, if you want the very best picture quality, then your server, or like if it's Kaleidoscape, or if you're using a Blu-ray player or Oppo, you have to have something that supports the very best picture. You have to have HDMI mm -hmm. or some kind of a solution to send the video at the full quality. And then you have to have a projector that can show all that. So yep. let's dive into that a little bit. And okay. where I want to start is with um, you know, the, the high dynamic range yep. and a little bit with the, the magnitudes, the levels of magnitude and what Sim's okay. doing there. Yeah, and I think that's the key. Uh, the number game, 4K or 1080p, those are all parts of the picture. This HDR capability, high dynamic range, is what lets the human eye see what's actually in the film. 
So if we see five changes in light at any one given time, we need a projector to be able to do that, and that's what HDR allows us to do. So it's more important to have high dynamic range and color and black and grayscale and not so much the resolution. Um, what you do have to have to do HDR correctly, and now we have HDR 10 plus, um, is the chain needs to be correct. And that means the correct cables, that means the correct video settings on the Blu-ray or the UHD player, the Kaleidoscape, and even the AVR that most of our systems are based around. They'll use a surround sound processor and use that to send signal from the Blu-ray or the direct TV or the dish into the projector. Well, all of those are weak links in the chain. And the ideal that right now we would like to see is a 10 or 12 bit video with 444 color spacing um, in an HDR plus format. Well, a lot of the products that are out there will dummy down to 8 bit and give you 420 or 400. Um, they do that because the pipelines may not be insured. We don't know what HDMI you got, what Cat 5 or Cat 6 you're using, and again, what players you're using. So this guy over here, the Nero 4, is the hot rod. This thing's a McLaren hybrid. <laughs> it rocks. This thing will do 12-bit uh, video, 60 frames a second, 444 color spacing, HDR 10 plus, and you, to allow it to do it, a sports car is a great analogy, you got to have all the parts. Got to have the right tires, got to have the right fuel in it, you got to have the right mechanic. So we like something like this where the specs on it, which we'll get into later, are phenomenal. It lets you actually see this. So um, I hope that answers some of the questions. No, yeah, it have. does. It, I want to I want to dive into each one of these a little bit deeper um, okay. without without burning too much of our time. But with high dynamic range, if you one of the things one of the first times that really hit home for me is uh, a projector manufacturer was doing a demo and he paused on an image where it was a darker scene and the main character had a very dark vest on. Mm -hmm. And he showed us, he paused it, and he showed us how we could see the detail, even though it was a dark scene in a dark vest, we could actually see the detail of the fabric in the vest because right. there was enough range there, high dynamic range, and there was enough black level mm -hmm. that we could see, um, it was probably more black levels than his high dynamic range, but, but the point is we could see the detail. And then when it got really bright, it didn't clip and wash out. We still mm -hmm. saw the detail even of the brightness. And that's what that high dynamic range is really giving us, is letting us see the detail yep. in brights and darks, mm -hmm. everything and that's in between. Critical. I can make it black in mo most old projectors, but then the blacks will be great, but there won't be any brightness. It won't look live or real like as I look outside the windows today. One of the, one of the things the SIM does, uh, the SIM 4S, is it really works to interpret the metadata coming from the source. So the mm -hmm. Blu-ray player or the Kaleidoscape and interpret it as close to what the studio intended yep. as possible. Exactly. Yeah, and that's really unique. This 4S has a very unique way of handling HDR. You can literally have four different settings and a user setting for HDR based on the size of the screen, the ambient room light or colors. So you can dial in the HDR. It's not a preset fix. So you can take our color calibration, you can take our uh, room's design or its parameters or the scheme of the architect and make this HDR look and pop. Um, this particular guy is 6,000 ANSI lumens and it's big brother. We actually take two of these and stack them. You have 10,000 ANSI lumens of power. And, and you're saying the guys at SIM, too, are saying that in order to get all of this information on the screen, the mm -hmm. best possible picture, we actually have to have five, 6,000 ANSI lumens. We Correct. can't do it with 2,000. Can you explain why? It's really because the engine doesn't have enough horsepower. And, you know, yes, it'll accept an HDR signal. Both of these are HDR units, but they're 1,800 ANSI lumens on the little guy and 2,200 ANSI lumens. So it'll accept an HDR signal, but you still don't see the changes in light and the magnitude of light. So photographers like this. Cameras have 14 f-stops, and you can see what that does to change the parameters of a high-quality SLR or digital camera. Well, that's what this guy does, and because of the horsepower, these, quote, can't really do that. You'll still get an HDR picture, and the little emblem will pop up when you have your HDR-enabled Blu-ray or UHD playing, but you can't see it all. So our competition right now that we usually see is 2,000, 3,000 ANSI lumens. Well, that's our entry level products. This is the McLaren. This is the bad boy. You know, 6,000 ANSI lumens, 10,000 ANSI lumens. We're talking 200, 220 inch, 240 inch screens in perfect 
cinema film presentations. Absolutely stunning. And, and it looks amazing. We had it just up and running for a while here, mm -hmm. and, and guests would come and walk in, and you know they would just casually walk by the door, and you'd hear them go, oh, wow, and walk in and just blown away by how sharp and crisp mm -hmm. it looked in the detail. One thing, we've got to hop off HDR, but without diving into names, one of the things we'll notice is some projector, manufacturer to manufacturer, you'll put it in the HDR setting, and it actually has a dimming effect, which mm -hmm. seems bizarre because it should seem like the picture is getting more crisp. Maybe it's a darker scene, mm -hmm. but it should be more detailed. One of the things we noticed with these is that we didn't get that dimming effect. In fact, I actually demoed these watching uh, Ready Player One. Okay. And if you've, if you've watched Ready Player One, um, it's a lot of CG, but there's a scene where they go into a guy's sort of workshop, and it's a darker scene. And it was fascinating to me as I switched, even within this line here, as I switched from, you know, say, the Domino to the Sim 4, the amount of detail I would see in that scene, it became crisper and sharper, mm -hmm. not dimmer. But some other projectors we watch that same scene on tend to feel dimmer, Yep, and that, even though it's in HDR. Yeah, so again, it's the horsepower and the optics behind the thing. This guy can do 93 line pairs per millimeter. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that the actual pixels, if I wanted to look at 8 million pixels that are coming out of that TV, you can actually see them. They're clear. They're not fuzzy. They're not blurred. They're sharp. And that is, in many cases, the most expensive item in a projector is the optics. So something here with this large piece of glass is allowing the DLP chipset to show all its strengths, which is razor clarity, sharpness, dynamic range. Um, we all know when you look at a window, if I put one pane of glass out, it's a nice clear view as long as it's clean and it didn't rain in Utah with the dirt from the <laughs> typical wind and rain we get. But if I put four or five layers of glass in there, it's not a crystal clear view out of the window. So optics are critical. Optics in all of these are absolutely state of the art, the best we can possibly do. And that's why you see it. The typical response is, that thing's clean, clear, and accurate. I didn't know that was possible. So. Uh, and, and, we, and we definitely notice it. On just to, we're going to finish up with HDR and hop on to 10, 12-bit okay. color. But with Greg sitting behind the computer right now, when, when HDR first hit, Greg explained to me that HDR is technically bigger, more important than 4K. But it's not gotten the same amount of press as 4K. He went and saw, uh, what was the movie you saw in L.A. at the theater? Do you remember? Tomorrowland. Yeah, he went and saw Tomorrowland. It was one of the first movies they did. At the El Capitan. Uh, mm -hmm. or Capitan. I probably just butchered the pronunciation okay. there. But... Okay. Um, so sorry, any enthusiasts. But he talked about it. He said he talked to some people there who um, were familiar with, you know, some of the studios. And he said they're actually grading and scaling back the picture because it's too intense mm -hmm. for most of us. Right. Uh, that's how much HDR affects it. So if you're not familiar with HDR, it's really cool stuff. And when you're designing your theater, you really want to pay attention, like he said, the whole chain. What's, what's your video source? What's the HDMI or, you know, your fiber? How are you sending the content? And then what's mm -hmm. your projector really capable of? Uh, and it, just if it says HCR, dig into that a little bit and find out what that actually means. Uh, and if you're, you know, HDR with 8-bit color is basically not even HDR. You aren't you, seeing it. you got to at least be 10-bit color, preferably 12-bit color well, to really that's, maximize that's it. that's kind of how we got going on it. I was going, the promise of 4K is there. I love it, this. Talk about this. Because guys used to sit there and go, oh, that's the only 4K unit, or that's faux K. And we were like, oh, dear. So the <laughs> promise of 4K is really, when you see it, it's stunning. It needs to be 10-bit. It needs to be that 444 color spacing. And frankly, if you have an 8-bit picture, you don't get the changes in the gradations of the color and the grayscale. Uh, fun numbers just for uh, a little kind of poking fun at people. So if you have 8-bit, you've got about 18 million color combinations. If you have a 10-bit processor, uh, which is what we have in a 12-bit processor here, you have 1.1 billion color combinations. That's huge. <laughs> What's the first one with 8-bit? So 8-bit is up to 18 million. So 18 million to 1 billion yeah. is the difference in color. In just color scale and color changes so that you can actually see all the hues and tints. So all our interior designers who sweat the difference between grays and blues and reds, they get it. You, you can see the difference in colors. That's what 12-bit and 10-bit offers is a massive increase in that product. These guys, on top of that with resolution, are actually 8.3 million pixels. So you'll see 8.3 million pixels. Our competition, 
mm, they'll talk about 4K. Some of them barely have 7 million pixels in them. So it's, again, they can talk it up. We guarantee the promise. You're going to see HDR at full dynamic range, the five magnitudes of light. You're going to see the clarity of the DLP chipset, which is fantastic. I mean, this baby even has, and I don't I want to jump too far ahead. You set it, run it for 30 minutes, reset uh, the parameters because it's warmed up, and then that circuitry stays there and locks in for all the age and differences as the projector is used. So it never drifts off of the settings that it's been locked into. And, and with, when we start talking, in, and this was a great segue into the 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit color, we're moving now from 10-bit, not a 12-bit color. Mm -hmm. And it's basically giving us, as you mentioned, you know, we're going from, was that 17 million to 1 billion uh, different color variations. I love to think of it back in art school or art class. You would take your, your, black, and your black pencil and you would sit there and you would shade from left to right, the, the brightest to the darkest. And not trying to go back to high dynamic range, but you would see black is always black. Mm -hmm. But we get more shades of black on our way to that color. Or blue is always, royal blue is always royal blue. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting a lot more variance on our way to royal blue. Yeah, and you know, it's killer on that one. A good analogy for me is the crayon box. You know, did yeah. you want the box of 12 or the box of 24? or the box of 48, or you were really in heaven as a kid when you got that <laughs> giant box of about 144 colors. Yeah. You didn't even know there were that many colors on the planet. And that's, and that's, I remember when we first started seeing this years ago when the 4K TV started coming out, one of the things that people would notice about the color is that it almost made things start to feel a little bit 3D because there was so much information yep. and the color, it looked incredible and people would stand there and go, wow, it just pops. Yep, that's definitely what happens in the 10-bit and the 12-bit those color changes and that ability to fine line details between changes in color or grayscale and blacks, that's what makes the picture look real, which means 3D. I mean, we've all had 3D projectors or 3D TVs and, you know, the kids smash the glasses or the kids step on stuff or the thing discharged and, you know, you're not going to watch the 3D movie without the glasses. Right, right along with, right along with and, and this is important because when we're talking about high dynamic range mm -hmm. and we don't want our brights to clip out and wash out, we've got to have the color there as well to yep. help with that. So yeah. we've got the gradients that we can move from. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're talking about color, we also have what we call chroma subsampling or color spacing. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about, you'll hear people, when you're looking at specs, you'll see things that say it's always three numbers and the first one's always a four. So it'll say 420 or 422 or 444. And basically, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but for those of you that are watching this and are curious, they use three colors and then a combination of light to put all of the color on our picture. And what they do is they can't put all that information out on the screen, so to compress it, they pull one of those colors out, mm -hmm. and they work with two colors and light to create all the colors on the screen. So 444 means basically there's no color compression. They've left all yep. three colors in, so we're getting the best possible color mm -hmm. that we can get on the screen. And, and these are able to do content in 444, which Absolutely. is phenomenal. Yep, and the, that difference of that 444 for the end user is that colors are accurate, colors don't get pumped up artificially and look cartoon-like, flesh tones look right, you don't have all these, eh, the best thing is cartoonish looking emphasized color. So when you sample it correctly, our problem again, and this is where the integrators and you guys are the pros, the pipeline's got to be good. If I don't have the right type of cabling, I don't have the right type of video switchers, um, you won't get all that information through. It's just like in the old days, how big a wire did you have to get power to the loudspeaker? You know, uh, you better not use 28 gauge wire to power a loudspeaker. You better use 14 or 16 gauge quality copper wire. And that's the problem we're bumping into. Most of the installs I go to, somebody missed something or, and you guys are the pros, you're using so many sources into so many different variables and the end result is a beautiful picture. Well, that takes masterpiece knowledge. Ta talking about, and, and we don't have time to go into this, but we have hit on this a lot. It's why we've been talking a lot about using fiber. Um, John also reps for some other lines that help with uh, balance and video distribution that, that minimize the compression. Um, so you're getting all of this good content out to the projector. Two quick things on the projector, and then we'll hit price points. We'll jump over to Dyn Audio. Okay. Um, number one is um, 
the live color correction. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. And then okay. also um, just hit on the lens memory, the ability to switch between the different inputs. Super. Okay, so live color calibration came out of the film industry, and the best way to do it is these are all live color calibration adjustable. But it, what it really means is that I can take, or where it came from, I should say, is in the movie industry, people are taking film and doing uh, production with all different types of cameras. But the end result is you want all those cameras with their differences to look the same in the final end product. So if you've got a shot of Morgan Freeman, he doesn't look tan in this picture and darker tan in that picture. Uh, we want to have those colors accurate. So that software that we uh, have invented is used in the auto industry for color calibration of paint finishes to people in California and in the, in the studios, making sure all the film looks exactly the same to the final result. So we can do that with these devices. So live color calibration is done by your, uh, your integrator, by these guys with a laptop. Once it's set, you don't ever have to mess with it again. But it literally allows you again to compensate for room color, room design, type of output of the projector, type of screen materials. I mean, we haven't even talked about screen materials. And that's a whole <laughs> other game, guys. And it, who's shifting to green and who's got sparkle or whatever. So we like that idea and I think that kind of gets kind of what we're doing with live color calibration. Yeah. And and I and I think from from kind of a from my perspective watching it, it's it's immediately noticeable. So if you walk in and you get a chance to demo a SIM2 somewhere and you watch it, you're going to notice these things. You may not be able to articulate what you're seeing, but you're going to notice that it's crisper, that it's sharper, that the color is real. I, I think you'll find it's a very, very positive experience. Talk mm -hmm. about the fixed lens or the, oh, the yeah. fixed position. Thanks. Yeah, so these have what we call perfect fit. So these projectors in the upper end, the smaller ones because of cost and optics are expensive, don't have perfect fit. But Perfect Fit allows us to do 235, 2.4, 16 by 9, 16 10 aspect ratios all electrically into the projector. So I can have multiple settings for each input to Is change the size of the screen. Uh -huh. And I can literally set it up for direct TV daylight viewing, direct TV nighttime viewing. 235 when I go to film, 24 when I have a film that's in a different ratio. Avatar was 16 10, I believe. So I can change those aspect ratios if I have a screen set up with that capability. So this thing will automatically do it. You guys can program it in. Um, it has a LAN input, so full control from off-site and full monitoring if there's ever an issue or something going on with the projector. Oh, cool. You guys could pull it up and go, oh, I see Bob's got a problem with uh, a fan occurring on that. Let's fix that before it becomes an issue. I didn't know about the monitoring piece. That's really cool from a, a service perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, real fast, run through price points, retail. Okay, yeah, so we start in the uh, Domino 4. So this is our entry level. We just introduced this this spring, 2018. This comes in at a $9,000, uh, is 1,800 ANSI lumens. and packs quite a punch. It's a great one. I mean, I love that you saw this one, and then you go, wow, this wasn't disappointing. This was really quite good. Yeah, very uh, exciting. Crystal is at 15,000 retail, and it's got a little more juice, 2200 ANSI lumens, same uh, optics, and it does not do that perfect fit. And then the Nero 4S comes in two configurations, this one shown here, and then a double stack, and that is $30,000 for this guy. And if you do the double stack, 10,000 ANSI lumens, it's, I mean, you won't ever leave your room. Uh, <laughs> that guy comes in at $45,000 for that. Array. To do two of them. To do stacked. two stacked. Yeah, and that's our extent right now with the 4K product. More to come, more models to come. Uh, we have another, I want to say, almost eight models still on the line in 1080p type products. Yes. Yeah. yeah, a really good full line at Sim2. These are specifically their their new 4K line. But again, we had a chance to test them for a while, really enjoyed them. Clients who came in and saw them were excited about them and um, were excited to start showing these to more clients. Cool. I think as you're out shopping and looking, if you can find a SIM2 dealer in your area, I highly recommend going. Or it sounds like a lot of times if you're serious, um, they can even bring one in. And yep. if there's one nearby, they can bring one in and demo it. Um, even do a side by side for you. So very definitely worth checking out. So mm -hmm. uh, thanks Sim2 for letting us borrow them for a while and uh, letting us borrow John too. It's been hugely helpful and we're excited about what you're doing. Let's uh, change gears here for a little bit. Okay. John also reps Dynaudio. And I, I gotta just preface this. So 
people bring in speaker lines for us all the time. We're pretty loyal to our speaker lines. Uh, but he brought in one speaker, and I don't even remember the model. Mm -hmm. You probably do. Yep. And, and they put it in just like a really quickly prefab box, so it had a housing on it. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we noticed about it, the sound was incredible, but the thing we noticed is that for a traditional in-ceiling speaker, there was a very full range of sound. We don't usually get that yeah. kind of range right. in one speaker. So we got a lot of bass, we got some good mids and highs. But I just laugh because you're telling us exactly what, I've done 14 demos now this month with this product. <laughs> Not necessarily here, Montana, Idaho, you know, obviously in Utah. And you play this product, it's a six inch in ceiling loudspeaker. And I've got it in a car audio box with a Rhino line, nothing glorious looking. And we've demoed this thing with Sonos amps, car audio amps from Alpine or Arc or, you know, Zapco to Diagostino monoblocks, Parasound power amplifiers. It doesn't matter what, guys. I'm playing this 6-inch 2A in a little 12-inch box, and we're doing critical listening on this thing. It blows people away. Well, I mean, uh, and it was funny because we were sitting literally right here in these chairs. The speaker was just in front of us, and a couple of the guys that worked with us walked in, and everybody heard it and instantly went, ooh. And came over and sat down, sat in kind of the king's chair and listened yeah. from it. I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. It's tell me, crazy. Tell me a little bit about Dyn Audio, and if you can, tell me about the, the studios. Okay. Yeah, that's to the good, extent that you can. Uh, yeah, and we won't, we won't be mean to somebody. But, <laughs> so the cool part is uh, Dyn's been in business over 40 years. We introduced a product last year called the Special 40. These guys got to see it. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks like a beautiful gray flannel suit. It's just stunning in the way it's made. But... 40 years of making speakers in Denmark, which is where Dyn Audio is out of, is a small country. Five million people. You got to make really good stuff to get world famous. And we are known as making the world's best soft dome tweeter. Bar none. It's an inch and a quarter device. When you hear one, it opens up the whole range of what's usually missing in loudspeakers. Most speakers kind of sound congested and aren't musical. This product does that. And I can't explain it other than I can show you the physics behind it, you know? You, you kind of have I mean, to hear well, it. You kind of got to hear it. But it didn't matter if I'm in a car shop around town, because we have a car audio line. We do uh, a lot of the Volkswagen, Porsche, Audi products worldwide. We're the OEM supplier and a lot of that type of product. At the same time, we've got these amazing home speakers that go from 800 a pair up to $115,000, $140,000 a pair. So there's some rare air up there. But... We're in 80,000 recording studios worldwide. That means that the music you guys are usually listening to was mastered and mixed on my speakers. So you're literally bringing that back to the house and hearing exactly what the guy heard and did on the mixing board in the recording studio. It's, it's insane. You guys heard them. We played it on a little tiny, what, 50-watt amplifier? And th there's a little bit more of that on Dynaudio's website, right? Oh, yeah. They have the about fan fantastic. About the, we get in the Abbey Road. Can we say that? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't. I hope I don't get in trouble. I mean, it's not in trouble. It's too good of a story it's not good. to share. So, there's a really great video on Dolby Atmos Theater, with a brand that's out there, uh, and it works great. But you'll go into that demo of the Atmos Studio on it's on YouTube. At a minute 45, you'll look into the background, and in the background, in this <laughs> Dolby Atmos 24 pairs of speakers ceiling array, it's all Dyn Audio. Not the other guy. Yeah. So I won't mention who the other guy is. <laughs> but you realize that those guys are recording with our product. And we have that pro product available today here in the States. You can do exactly what they're doing. Uh, we have speakers that can go into cinema that will do 135 dB of sound pressure, which is insane. 135 dB? I don't want to be in the room. Um, <laughs> and now we make... Uh, an in-wall product, and that's kind of my segue here, is... Yeah, tell us about it. This is really so cool. This, this is, is for the cool. sound bars, right? Yeah, so this is like for sound bars or in-wall product. And so what we do is we've got in-wall 6-inch, in-wall 8, an in-wall, sorry, an in-ceiling 6 and an in-ceiling 8. And then this combo, which I call the Lego set. And basically you can snap them together, and I won't do it so we uh, make a mistake and drop them, but they'll literally snap together like this, or they can be put in different uh, stud, stud wall bays so that when they're laying underneath your TV, this will be centered on the TV correctly, and this one can be in the next bay. Or they can be tied together, or I can have them up and down, 
and then we make a grill that literally can be custom sized to go completely across the bottom. So I have this nice seamless look at the bottom of the flat panel television, which is neat. What I like this for, and why I pull it out, is these are toolless install. So they're very easy for you to put in. They'll go into a uh, three inch deep wall. So if you've got a, um, you know, a fancy plaster job or something a little different than just half inch sheetrock. But the build quality of these products is insane. This is a five and a quarter inch driver. So that's common size. If you look at that, how big's that voice call, Matt? <laughs> it's plenty good. It's like three inches. I mean, we're talking about a product that's this big and the voice coil's that big. So the type of control, the power handling of this speaker, the sweating the details of how this driver acts is unprecedented in our industry. Typically, it's a half inch or one inch voice coil. And they, and they sound great and from, a, from a kind of a practical standpoint. Mm -hmm. you know, we did a lot of work with production builders and one of the things that happens with these homeowners is they want to have their TV centered on the room and they want to have a sound bar recessed underneath or yep. center channel. And a lot of times the home builder won't let them do what they need to to accomplish that and make that sound bar perfectly centered. They can't do like a little window box right. to house a speaker. Having something like this, even in new construction, is huge mm -hmm. to be able to center that aesthetically and for sound reasons. And then if you're doing some kind of a retrofit, same thing, a great opportunity to get those speakers centered directly under the TV yep. really helps a lot aesthetically, but the sound's amazing as well. Yeah, and that's, I think, what is the, my, my favorite part of the whole demos has been, it didn't matter if I'm in a car shop or integrators or a high-end audio store, they're playing anything from Adele to, you know, rap music to the rock and roll guys, and they all sit there going, I haven't heard a speaker do that. And they start smiling and they get goosebumps. And, you know, one of the key things with music and video and film is the better it gets, the more it's closer to real and then the closer it is to giving you that same experience again. Because, you know, you, re you play a great song, it'll bring you to tears. You know, it'll make, bring back memories of when you were in high school or whatever. And Same if, thing with film. With Dyne Audio in general, correct me if I'm wrong, but they, they've been around a long time, but they're kind of recently making mm -hmm. sort of this new push um, with kind of a, a more full line to yeah. kind of hit a number of different price points and, and applications. Uh, and that's kind of when you started coming and talking to us about mm -hmm. Dyne Audio. Yeah. Sort of a new rollout, basically. Yeah, so literally three years ago, uh, Dyne Audio made a worldwide push. Instead of just making beautiful-looking cabinets out of Denmark and gorgeous-sounding speakers, they figured out, we're going we're gonna to ramp it up. We're going to take this to a worldwide approach. We make some of the finest loudspeakers in the world, and we're going to go out and get the word out. So we've expanded into the custom install products. We've expanded our range of high-end speakers. Um, at the same time, we've come out with now what we call music, which is a series of uh, desktop or tabletop audio systems that you can stream lossless audio into. Yeah, wireless. Wirelessly. Um, some of them are portable, battery powered. Uh, the bigger ones actually have um, eight inch woofers in them and would sit on top of a table as a almost a sound bar if you wanted to. That product has uh, just been introduced and it's giving a, a lifestyle products basically. Yeah. So yeah, we can do sound bars, we can do in-wall and ceiling, Dolby Atmos Theater, these music systems, um, and then what's a rage right now in Northern Europe and in uh, uh, Asia are powered speakers. So what we have is bi-amplified, tri-amplified, and actually quad-amplified wireless audio loudspeakers that are absolutely gorgeous, going up to the $15,000 a pair range and all the way down to the $12.99 a pair. And it's stunning to watch people listen to these. You just need a phone, Tidal, Spotify, whatever you want to use for your music source. Turn them on, and you're listening to, you know, 24, 192, lossless audio off your iTunes or whatever you want to use. Huh. And you have no wires. Are you going to have any of those at CDA? Oh, yeah, we got them. I have a pair here. That we can listen to? Yeah, yeah that sounds like for you guys. That They're sounds like fun. Amazing. We'll, we'll, we'll try like, those out. Yeah, that thing's got 600 watts RMS per speaker full DSP control, full room correction. I mean, it's crazy what these things can do. Well, we're, we're, we're super excited about the Dyn Audio line. I think it's worth checking out if you're looking at speakers. Um, this is not going to be a contractor grade. 
If no. you're looking at you know fifty dollars, sixty dollars a speaker price point, a Dyn Audio is not going to be for you. If you're looking for something that's going to give you amazing sound, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. Granted, they do have some really good price points mm -hmm. on sort of their entry level. What do they start out at? So the regular speakers, floor and bookshelf, is eight hundred pair. That's the retails on their smallest. Yeah, and, and for, for a hi-fi type speaker, those are great prices. Yeah, and that, that product range, depending on whether it's Excite or, um, you know, the various models we have, Consequence and Confidence and so on. But um, in the in-wall products, we have that $600, $800 a pair range. The newer products, like this LCR, that's a product that's in the $1,600 to $1,800 a pair which, which oh, sorry, piece retails. Which is actually a phenomenal price because when you start shopping custom sound bars, mm -hmm. which is I would say this falls into that category of yep. a custom sound bar, uh, it's very easy to spend two thousand twenty five hundred dollars for oh, a yeah. custom sound bar. Yep. Um, so that's a phenomenal price and it's such a great application, mm -hmm. and again a great sound. So, again, they're not your value line speakers by any stretch. These are really good speakers, high-end speakers, but with a great price point for what they are. Mm -hmm. um, we're super excited. Uh, we can't wait to meet the team at Cedia. Yeah, we're going to um, all get together at Cedia and then go to the, the whiskey bar or whatever. Yeah, so. is, that, is that anybody can come to that? For those of you watching that are going to be at Cedia, is anybody invited? you got to be a dealer. What's the I think you got to be a dealer or get invited by your reps. So, okay, we'll you talk know. to your reps about yeah, Diane. Talk to the reps about it for Diane because I don't want to... <laughs> I'd like to get Andrew we're gonna get, and those we're gonna guys. Get Dine in yeah. We're going to get John in trouble we'll with Dine. We'll have 500 so. <laughs> guys come over to the Hey, John, the we really bar. appreciate that video you did, but yeah. our tab was like 5K. Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. But the Dine product is a luxury, niche, high-end product. And over the years, you know, we used to OEM for stuff. So we would put our quality products in other brands. Well, that's not happening anymore. Uh, we stopped that a few years ago, and we can barely keep up with production. The demand has been cool. We're growing at 40% a year, and we're gonna we're gonna put that Dyn Audio name out on the map, baby. It's gonna we're, be good. We're excited. We're glad you reached out to us. We'll give you last say on either the Sim2 projectors or Dyn Audio. Anything you want to say to uh, our friends? Uh, try them out, guys. I mean, they're fantastic. I appreciate these guys giving me the time to show. Matt, Brad, and Greg did a great job. You know, I want them back so I can play my movies, you know. <laughs> you, but, you can take them back now. All I know is that when I take that little that little hybrid McLaren out and do a demo, I've never had a customer say, uh, take it away. They usually go, put one in, yeah. and let's take it home. Great products. All right, everybody, that wraps this one up this week. As always, we appreciate you watching. Um, next week, we're actually headed to Cedia, mm -hmm. so we're not totally sure yet what day we're doing the Facebook Live. We are going to do one. It may be Saturday. We'll let you know as soon as we know. Um, we're... Pending guest, uh, trying to see if which guest is going to be on with us next week, but we will be live from Cedia. So it should be fun. Make sure you check that one out. We'll see you later. Great. Thanks.